Welcome to the Biology 182 Evolution Series. This video will help students understand the concept of speciation. At the end of this video, students should be able to explain the process of speciation and to understand the mechanisms resulting in new species. Speciation is a congregation of accumulated genetic changes over time. There are many different things that can cause speciation. The two main types are allopatric and sympatric, and these changes accumulate through various ways. One mechanism is reproductive isolation. Another is through genetic mutations or genetic recombinations. Also, natural selection and adaptation play a role. Genetic drift can play a role and hybridization, which would be with other organisms. And then polyploidy we'll discuss with most regard to plants and geographical isolation. Allopatric speciation occurs when the habitat or geographic um, environment changes. So in the beginning, when we have these fish, they come from a, um, an ancestral population of pork fish. And over time, it used to be they could swim across where this isthmus of Panama was. Um, as the world evolved and the continents changed and shifted, and now there are mountain areas creating the isthmus of Panama that connects North and South America, there's no longer an interbreeding around the Caribbean Sea there. So this newfound landlock keeping the ocean pieces of the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea separate has created a divergence in the habitats of these two pork fish. So this may be a very slow process because geological change is not quick for the most part. Mountain formations and glaciation and mass flooding can take a long time to occur and small populations branching off um, do not evolve instantly into other uh, populations of organisms. But there is a commonality where gene flow is lost between the two organisms because the gene pools are no longer connected. And over time, these individual gene pools now no longer being connected results in each species adapting to the new environment and adapting to changes that the other species is not acclimated to or exposed to. And this results in these accumulation of changes that over time diverge the two organism um, populations enough that they become separate species. And this is known as allopatric speciation, where some form of geologic um, isolation occurs and now one population becomes two separate and distinct species. One way that we can identify allopatric speciation and geographic isolation is known as adaptive radiation. So adaptive radiation is easily seen with Darwin's finches. And we can also see it in the Hawaiian Islands with um, these amazing different bird forms, right? We have these birds that have these beaks that are all very specialized into um, their niche. Right in their geographic isolation on the Hawaiian islands. Maybe one is in one area of an island and another is in a different area of an island, or um, they are among the islands, but they adapt to different niches. Over time, they evolve separate behaviors like different mating rituals and different mating calls. They live and exploit different habitats. So one might be in the trees and one might be in the bushes and one might be at the top of a tree or the bottom of a tree. And so these exploited niches are what's creating the new organism's adaptation. Um, it's leading the selection to point to it toward whatever niche they're exploiting. We also see their morphology change based on things in their environment. You can see in the diagrams that some of the birds have really large beaks that are good at crushing seeds and some are really good at probing for insects that they can find in plants and others are um, ones that are really adapted at finding 
insects underneath the bark of a tree or living um, underneath areas where they can kind of pick out where the insects are because they have this probing protuberance as their beak. Some of them are really good at finding seeds. Others are really good at sucking out the nectar of flowers. Some are really good at eating insects only in plants or um, the various niches each one of these birds can exploit will lead to different morphological characteristics that we see. As well, over time, we can see changes in coloration. We'll see changes in their mating behaviors and mating calls. We'll see how various organisms are adapting to an environment that gives them a selective advantage. And over time, these advantages create a divergence in the population where a bird that is a darker color living in one area will no longer want to mate with a lighter colored bird because it won't be beneficial for their offspring in where they're living. If they exploit a certain environment, they're not going to want to mate with a bird that doesn't have similar characteristics because their offspring won't be as adapted to that environment. Over time, we see these species diverge enough from one ancestral population that was isolated on an island into a huge variety or diverse expanse of organisms. You can see here there's 27 different variety of birds that all started from this one organism in the Hawaiian Islands. Sympatric speciation now is where you're actually in the same environment and sometimes the formation comes like these are the crater lakes and these crater lakes are yes there are small subpopulations but even the subpopulations of the main population get divided and speciated without any type of geographic interference or change and so it is based on assortative mating where um, sexual selection is the defining factor. So in these fish, it turned out that color of the fish was a really big deal. And some of them had this gold shimmer and the gold color morph was advantageous for a lot of fish. So various colorings drove the selection in these um, fish. Also lip sizing, if their lips were thick instead of thin, they were more desirable. But as these changes became more pronounced, fish had wanted to mate with other fish like them. And it was because it was easier for them to adapt to a certain portion of the environment. Maybe the thin lips made it easier to eat certain um, plants or other little fish. And maybe the thick lip lips gave them an advantage over um, other thin-lipped organisms. And so the lip sizing and the color changes, even in one lake, drove the change enough to create a speciation event within the fish. So now we see all of these different species found in each of these small little lakes. This speciation was not driven by an exclusive geographic event creating a divide in the population, but simply a desire within the population to exploit certain traits. So another way this happens, this sympatric speciation, is through polyploidy. And polyploidy is an extra set of chromosomes that is arisen through a couple of different mechanisms. This happens so often in plants, like hardly ever in animals. It's less than 1% happens in animals. But in plants, it happens regularly, like probably 70% of the time we'll see polyploidy events that can occur. Polyploidy is going from, say you have, you're an organism that has two sets of chromosomes. In the polyploidy, you now have three sets of chromosomes. So one way this can happen is through autopolyploidy, and that's a non-disjunction. So when we refer back to meiosis and we think about how meiosis occurs, when our homologous chromosomes are lining up, they line up and separate one from mom and one from dad going to each pole, right? Well, when there's a non-disjunction, that means one of the chromosomes, it is not aligned correctly. It is not attached to the appropriate kinetic cord to be pulled apart, right? And so, or to the spindle fiber to be pulled apart. And so we wind up with an extra set of chromosomes in part of the gamete cells. So instead of being um, an N 
population, we now have gametes that are n plus one and others that are n minus one. Now in animals, a lot of times this results in just apoptosis of those certain um, gamete cells, right? Because they won't fuse and become um, zygotes. So they're not fertile or viable. However, in plants, they tolerate this very well. And so this N plus one could become another organism. Another way in which this occurs is through species mating. So usually when two closely related genetic relatives mate, you could wind up with an a set of chromosomes from the first species and a set of chromosomes from the second species. This creates a third alternate species. They have to be relatively close in genetic uh, makeup and they have, um, in plants, they have a tendency to allow this to occur and um, to have this new species form as well. Allotetraploid organisms have two full sets of chromosomes from two full sets of different species. So it was like species one and species two didn't just have their zygote form. It was like species one's full chromosome um, series, both the original one from mom and one from dad that makes up the organism, plus species two's original from mom and dad that make up the organism come together and fuse. So now they have four sets of chromosomes instead of two sets of the chromosomes. And that can create an alternate species as well. So when we look at these mechanisms, there's lots of ways, especially in plants, for us to see new species evolve um, with tremendous genetic diversity in very simplistic ways. Another way that this happens is through adaptation to an environment. A really easy way to see this is in insects. So an apple maggot fly had originally started um, living in a population where there were hawthorn trees that were native to the area. And humans brought in apple trees. And once the apple trees were introduced, the hawthorn fruit takes a really long time to mature where the um, flies can lay their eggs and their larva can grow within these hawthorn fruit. Well, as the apple trees were introduced, their fruit matures much faster. So some of the flies were using this new fruit that's being introduced to create um, a, a new habitat for their larva to be able to grow and um, live and become adults through. So because they mature faster, they became a subspecies of the original and uh, because the fruits mature faster. Now they became a subspecies of the original and over time, after enough accumulation of differences occur and enough adaptation to this new apple habitat occur, they will eventually become a completely separate species within the population. So that derivation from where they're living um, and where they're planting or laying their eggs so that their larva can develop into adults, it deviates so much from the other population that their genetic makeup has enough of a divergence that we see two entirely different species. So when we look at this, we saw that allopatric speciation was a way that new species are formed, having a divide or a barrier or a gen, um, genetic separation of gene pools based on a geographic isolation event. So adaptive radiation results from allopatric speciation where there's like um, an island that gets one species that exploits several niches and leads to multiple species in that island. Then we see this um, separation of two populations from a water geographic event or a mountainous geographic event or some kind of change that leads to allopatric speciation. And then we see sympatric speciation, which occurs as a subset population within the original population group. And an example of that was polyploidy. And we see that tremendously in plants, how we go from a species that's 2N to a species now that has four sets of um, chromosomes instead of two or three sets of chromosomes instead of two. And in our allopatric speciation, um, we know that adaptive radiation can occur within that one species to diverge tremendously after exploiting ecological niches, 
But in sympatric speciation, there is no isolating mechanism like that. And so it's just the niche within the population. And sometimes that niche is like next to where the main niche is. And that's called parapatric or partial speciation, spatial isolation. And so then there's peripatric where it's like um, a whole new niche, but next door. So not like on the edge of our city, but like in a neighboring city, right? And so it's still isolated in a separate niche, but that's peripatric. And that is more on the periphery of separating the population, sometimes referred to as that um, founder effect. Students should be able to understand the mechanisms in which lead to speciation or how speciation can occur. Students should be able to differentiate between allopatric and sympatric speciation. Students should be able to describe adaptive radiation, as well as contrasting autoploidy, alloploidy, and allotetraploid organisms.